We are in the midst of a global food crisis, and it's getting worse. Severe drought intensifies growing hunger crisis across sub-Saharan Africa. Eight billion people on the planet. Deadly cattle contagion threatens food security. Widespread crop failures threaten global food security. Massive insect swarms devastate crops. Unprecedented climate extremes ravage communities worldwide. Climate is not getting any better. So if we do not want our people to starve, we must learn to survive with more severe conditions. Things look bleak sometimes, but science gives us hope. Nuclear science and technology is striving to fulfill that hope, finding solutions to enable a better life for all. Ninety-eight percent of Tetsi flight eradicated. Atomic tech pushes Zanzibar rice output. Nuclear technology plays a crucial role in the field of nutrition. Isotope fingerprint helps identify food fraud. Gamma irradiation is effective at disinfecting wheat and rice. Increased water use efficiency by over eighty percent. Eradication of sheep and goat plague in sight. Nuclear technology helps eradicate insect pests. Extending the shelf life of fruit. This is the wonder of our science, and the question is. Where will you take it next? That, that was a question to all of us, ladies and gentlemen. Where will we take science and technology to improve our agri-world food systems? And with that, I'd like to take a moment to expend, extend a special greeting to you all, your excellencies, Director General, our distinguished guests, both here in the room and those who are joining virtually. My name is Christine Mundwa, and I have the great pleasure this year of steering us through the Scientific Forum 2024. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here this morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we saw it in the report over there. We have our challenges, but we have hope in science. And I have a good story to tell you this morning, one you will be hearing throughout our forum this year. That is that the collaboration between the IAEA and the FAO, we've seen some improvements in the way that we're able to live our lives. We've seen fruitful results in this partnership because over 60 years, ladies and gentlemen, what we've been able to do at the Center for Nuclear Techniques in Food and Agriculture has resulted in providing our farmers with better crops, giving them the ability to be able to fight insects and pests, resulting in healthier livestock, making food safer for us all. But as we saw in that video, so many people are food insecure around the world, and much of that has to do with climate change. So over the next day and a half, today and tomorrow, we'll be putting our heads together to discuss the innovation in nuclear technology and how that can help us strengthen and improve our food system so that we can eradicate poverty, so that we can achieve our sustainable development goals as a global community. So over an opening session today, three technical sessions, two of which we'll have today and tomorrow, and then that will be followed by our closing sessions. That is precisely what we will be discussing. I want to take a moment to tell you that our event is being live streamed, and you can all participate by joining uh, the web page as well as other platforms. At this juncture, I'd like to have us get our opening remarks now, and those will be delivered by Director General Rafael Mariano Rossi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's uh, great to be uh, here with you again for yet another um, scientific forum. You know the scientific forum um, takes place every year um, alongside the general conference uh, of the IEA. Um, and uh, it is something we cherish and we like to do because this gives us an opportunity to uh, get together around um, a very important issue and something that we want to work together with our member states on. Um, it's called the Scientific Forum, but in fact, it's more than that. It is a meeting of people who want to look at a problem and do something concrete about it. It's not an academic exercise uh, in, this, in, this, in this sense. And of course, um, as you were rightly saying in your opening words, or you 
maybe saw in the opening uh, video. Um, among the um, convergence of uh, uh, difficult situations and crises that we are facing uh, these days, uh, the issue of food, hunger, food security has appeared or reappeared with particular intensity. And this makes uh, us all from uh, states, from a national perspective, but also from the side of international organizations, um, put us in front of a big, big responsibility. The IAEA um, is characterized, um, as you know, by being uh, an institution wha that while having a very important political role in the world, um, is an instrument of science. It's an instrument of science, applied science and, and technology. So when we talk about issues like this, uh, we do it from a perspective of providing a very concrete solution to the problem. Um, the statistics are there, and I could uh, get uh, in, into those um, also, into these depressing figures, this 700 or is it 800 million people uh, going to bed uh, hungry uh, every night, um, or the other that has it that um, there is a child dying from um, uh, hunger every five minutes, or is it five seconds? At a certain point, we are so overwhelmed by these um, figures, by the reality and the gravity of the problem, that we run the risk of losing perspective. Thing is, we cannot. Thing is, we must not. And we need to do whatever is possible within our capacities to change this reality. So how do we go about it uh, in the IAEA? Nuclear applications, science and technology allow us to use a number of very concrete techniques to attack and solve some of these problems. And I'm going to explain this through the ways in which this Atoms for Food initiative, which I had the honor to launch together with our friends and colleagues from the FAO, of course, when you talk about food, uh, FAO is uh, the leading institution in the international system. Uh, and I've been working with uh, DG Chudong Yu for a long time on these issues, we decided to do something together, uh, though based by on the technologies provided by the IEA. And we, say, we did it in a way, again, uh, which is concrete. I think countries do not need more speeches or policy papers to be convinced of these problems. What they need is solutions. And we presented uh, this Atoms for Food Initiative as a set of services. Yes, services. Things that you, looking at the menu of Atoms for Food, you can say, this is what I need. This is what my country, according to its geography, economic situation, scientific and technical infrastructure, population, etc., is uh, in need of. And this includes, of course, self-assessments, know where we are. This includes um, techniques to improve uh, crops, which is not genetic modification, uh, not that. It's uh, induced uh, processes using uh, nuclear technology that, for, for example, allow uh, us to develop uh, drought-resistant crops. We have a big problem with water in the world, so we have to make uh, uh, these crops grow with less water, simple as that. It also has to do with soil management. In these conditions, what do we do? How do we get from Mother Earth more? 
in conditions where there is uh, drought, where there is perhaps overuse of fertilizers in the past, where uh, conditions do not allow for a normal conduction of um, agriculture processes. And nuclear allows us to, uh, by dripping techniques, by a perfect calculation through isotopic hydrology of how much water is needed so that we have a good result. It is also a way to increase, sometimes geometrically, yields of certain crops. Water management, as I said, also, and very, very importantly, techniques to control pests and insects. You all know about the sterile insect technique. It is not a new technique, but it's still needed. And it's still, as it was shown in the video just now, uh, it is used in, in many countries where uh, we have recurrent waves of um, tsetse flights, we have uh, malaria, we have chica, we have the return of dengue in my part of the world, in Latin America, in South America, chikungunya. Uh, all these uh, maladies that can be addressed very efficiently with simple um, irradiation uh, techniques. We can also provide for uh, food control check uh, food fraud and the, the use of food which is not good for consumption. All of these are services that Atoms for Food provide to member states. And um, this is uh, not only an issue of health and feeding people who need it, it is also very importantly uh, an important factor and facilitator for economic development. Let me tell you that, for example, uh, in some countries, I have many in the room, many African brothers and sisters, cassava is so important. And for example, in Ghana, we have tripled the uh, yield of uh, cassava production by using these techniques. Or in Pakistan, where we, where we have doubled the yield of basmati and, and long uh, grain rice. So things that are immediately having an impact in, the, in, in trade, in commerce, in GDP of countries. Uh, so, uh, dear friends, um, the science is there, the technology is there, and an institution like the IEA is there. And this is why we wanted today to have the testimony of um, countries that are working, that will be working with us. And I want to thank the presence of uh, Morocco, of uh, Kenya, um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, mis hermanos Uruguay, China, that is so um, uh, dynamically working with African countries. And I want to mention especially the presence of the president of the OPEC fund, Abdelhamid al-Khalifa, a dynamic leader that has understood that these neighbors in Vienna could do a lot in the global scene. And we are determined to do that. So let me welcome you to this forum that more than a forum is a call for action. More than a forum is a conversation among people who are worried but are determined to do things better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director General. Thank you for those opening remarks, Director General. You've set the tone for our scientific forum. And at this juncture, I will introduce our first speaker. We have the delight of being in the company of high-level international speakers. And the first of those will be Mr. Abdul Hamid Al Khalifa, who is president of the OPEC Fund for International Development. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, Director General Grossi, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, speaking to this uh, distinguished group, and thank you, uh, Rafael, for the invitation. 
Uh, as maybe Rafael uh, mentioned, maybe, uh, we, uh, we have uh, all uh, countries uh, or uh, group that are representing countries, but in our case, uh, OPEC Fund is, is the financing institution that will work with uh, IAEA in, in uh, making this research transform to a reality. And this is what we uh, are doing with uh, our uh, neighbors, uh, uh, IAEA. Uh, today, we are united uh, by a common mission to ensure food and sustain agriculture through the transformative power of science and technology. They are essential because we are, <clears throat> we, as we confront these challenges of hunger and climate change, uh, it is clear that science-based uh, innovative solutions are essential. They are essential because we are nowhere near the delivery of sustainable development goal number two. According to the latest estimate by the UN World Food uh, Program, as many as 300 and million people are facing chronic hunger in more than 71 countries. Of these, 37 million are facing emergency level of hunger or worse. This is unacceptable for us as uh, international uh, uh, group. We must explore every avenue to secure food supplies for all and help deliver the 2030 sustainability agenda. Nuclear technology, uh, as described by uh, uh, Mr. Grossi, usually associated with energy is now making a difference uh, to agriculture and food security in innovative ways. Using radiation techniques in agriculture can control pests and diseases, increase crop production, protect land and water resources, and ensure food security. Groundbreaking research by IAEA and the UN Food and Agriculture Organization has demonstrated enormous opportunities for strengthening the sector's res resilience uh, and optimizing results. Uh, the OPEC Fund views agriculture as cornerstone of sustainable development. It provides not just food, but also jobs and rural development, which are key to long-term stability. Between 2018 and 2023, development projects completed by the OPEC Fund directly benefited more than 2.1 million farmers globally. These projects have improved access to essential resources, technologies, and training, uh, and are helping farmers boost productivity and secure their livelihoods. We believe in effective and practical solutions, and we are delivering where it is matters on the ground. This, demonstrate, this is demonstrated by our One Billion Food Security Action Plan, adopted in 2022. <laughs> to address short-term emergencies in supply, the plan also addresses long-term challenges to strengthen food security. Our projects reach as far as Paraguay, Jordan, Uzbekistan, and Zimbabwe, to name uh, just a few examples. Uh, going forward, we are deepening our commitment to uh, fighting hunger and making food systems more resilient worldwide by pledging another $2 billion to food security projects between 2025 and 2030. Strengthening food security is a challenge that requires uh, a transformation of our current way of producing and distributing agriculture products. A new technology will be essential to feed global population that is forecast to reach 10 billion people in 2050. We need effective solutions urgently. Nuclear science must be part of our answer to that. This is why OPEC Fund has joined forces with 
the IAEA to harness the potential of nuclear technology in agriculture. Our renewed partnership formalized in June uh, this year will scale up the financing of nuclear technologies for building agriculture resilience and food security. From plant breeding to pest control, IAEA's nuclear te uh, techniques demonstrate their power in improving food security and resilience, particularly in areas most affected by climate change. The OPEC Fund is a vital link in mobilizing resources, driving innovation, and helping nations meet their sustainable development goals. Forming partnerships that deliver impactful and sustainable solutions is key to success. Though that's why we are especially proud of our excellent partnership with IAEA. While doing all of that, we must transform our food systems in a climate-friendly way. Nuclear-enabled technologies such, uh, such as uh, precision farming, improved soil management, and climate-resilient crops are critical tools in this effort. By supporting projects that integrate food security and climate resilience, the OPEC Fund is addressing the challenges of today while ensuring sustainability tomorrow. One recent example is the food security and climate adaptation facility we established with the UN World Food Program. We welcome partners to join this effort and build, and build solutions that is last more. As, multi, as a multilateral development bank established 40 years, uh, uh, 48 years ago, uh, with experience working in more than 125 countries, the OPEC Fund is deeply committed to international cooperation. We stand ready to support our partners and collaborate. Together, we can build a future where food security is guaranteed, where agriculture is resilient to climate change, and where no one is left behind. Together, through partnerships, innovation, and shared determination, we can build a more resilient and prosperous future for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Al-Khalifa. I was really happy to hear you mention Zimbabwe. That is home for me. Our next speaker is also from my part of the world, DG. Uh, that is His Excellency Musalia Mudavadi, Prime Cabinet Secretary, as well as Cabinet Secretary for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs in Kenya. Director General Rafael Grossi, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, it is indeed an honor to address this gathering of eminent persons from around the world at this very important scientific forum. I commend the agency and the Director General for the timeliness of the theme of this forum, Atoms for Food, Better Agriculture for Better Life which comes in the wake of commodity price inflation linked to the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, prevailing conflicts in key world food producing regions, adverse impacts occasioned by climate change, pests, diseases, outbreaks, among others. Allow me to say, therefore, that we are proud as a country to be part of discussions in addressing one of the pressing global challenges of food insecurity. I also congratulate the Director General for launching together with the FAO the Atoms for Food Initiative. According to FAO, with only six years from 2030, hunger and food insecurity trends are not yet moving in the right direction to end hunger and food insecurity by 2030. The indicators of progress towards achieving global nutrition targets similarly show that the world is not on track to eliminate all forms of malnutrition. Billions of people still lack access to nutritious, safe, and sufficient water, food. 
FAO statistics further show that in 2023, an estimated 28.9% of the global population, that is 2.33 billion people, were moderately or severely food insecure. Between 713 to 757 million people may have faced hunger in 2023. One out of 11 in the world and one out of every five in Africa. Now, worldwide food insecurity disproportionately affects women, children, and people living in rural areas. Further, on economic access to nutritious food, estimates show that more than one third of people in the world, about 2.8 billion, could not afford a healthy diet in 2022. Inequalities are evident with low income countries having the largest percentage of the population that is unable to afford a healthy diet. With the lack of improvement in food, insecurity, food security and the uneven progress in the economic access to healthy diets, it is projected that 582 million people will be chronically undernourished at the end of the decade with more than half of them in Africa. These figures point to a crisis that calls for us to reach for bolder solutions. There's an urgent need to accelerate the transformation of our agri-food systems with innovative approaches to enhance their resilience against major challenges and address existing inequalities, ensuring that healthy diets are both accessible and affordable for everyone. We must find innovative solutions to counter unsustainable food production occasioned by changing climate, soil degradation, pests, shortage of water resources, and decreased yields through uh, growth rates. It is untenable, for example, that while Africa has 60% of the world's uncultivated arable land, with an agricultural sector accounting for 35% of Africa's GDP, we spend a staggering 78 billion US dollars on food imports each year. In the Horn of Africa, there is no year or season in which the whole region receives normal rainfall and is free from climatic anomalies such as floods or drought. We also must tackle the problem of post-harvest losses, whereby according to the WFP, one third of all food production produced, equivalent to 1.3 billion tons, for human consumption is lost or wasted. Again, these losses are most significant in the developing countries where smallholder farmers regularly lose 40% of their harvest due to inadequate storage and lack of preservation mechanisms. The Atoms for Food Initiative is therefore a very timely, is therefore very timely and can play a pivotal role in availing the much needed transformational solutions in averting the growing food crisis. I am pleased to note that by harnessing the advantages of nuclear techniques, along with other advanced technologies, the initiative aims to support countries to enhance agricultural and livestock productivity, natural resources management, reduce food losses, and ensure food safety, improve nutrition, and adapt to the challenges of climate change in effect tackling some of the major impediments to food security. I also take note that these groundbreaking solutions to be availed under the initiative will be tailored to the specific needs and circumstances of countries, a key factor to achieving far-reaching and impactful outcomes. The food and agricultural sector is the backbone of Kenya's economy, contributing about 24% of the country's GDP and 65% of export earnings. In addition, agriculture has the highest employment multiplier effect, providing the livelihood of over 80% of, Kenyan, of Kenya's population, owing to its strong forward and backward linkages to other sectors of the economy. Hence, the strengthening of our agricultural sector is a key development priority for Kenya. Cognizance that innovation in agriculture plays a pivotal role in addressing food security challenges, the government focus is on incentivizing production 
by adopting responsive technological innovations and promoting mechanization and digitization of agriculture to enhance effectiveness and efficiency in agri-food systems performance. Nuclear and related techniques come as very effective, uh, very effective in managing the challenges brought about by climate change and improvement in productivity and nutrition quality that is greatly needed in the world. In this regard, we appreciate the support we have received from the agency through which Kenya has successfully used nuclear techniques to drive smallholder productivity by improving water and nutrition, use of efficient crop and livestock improvement, and high productivity. However, drought, floods, and predictable climate and post-harvest loss, losses continue to be a challenge to our crop production and food security in the country. <laughs> Under this initiative, we look forward to support the extension of the mutation breeding and molecular techniques for crop improvement to major crops, food irradiation, to prolong the shelf life of foods and in the implementation of assisted reproductive technologies to improve the quality of animal reproduction and nutrition. With this support, for example, in the area of food irradiation, to prolong the, li the shelf life of foods, Kenya can avert the loss of harvested crops, which is estimated to be about 20 to 30 percent of crops annually. We therefore look forward to the agency's support in the establishment of a fast food eradicator. While supporting the ambitions, ambitious plans of the initiative, we note that without the requisite funding, it, its performance will be dismal. I therefore urge the agency and FAO to redouble its efforts of fundraising and support from development partners and the private sector to enhance partnerships with UN entities. Kenya has several institutions such as CALRO and universities that will continue to offer training and services to other African countries looking forward to become a regional hub with the support of the agency. As I conclude, I urge us to collectively take ownership of this noble initiative and work together, together towards its successful implementation. On my side, I wish to assure you of Kenya's commitment in supporting and championing the initiative. I thank you. Thank you, His Excellency. Our next speaker this morning is Mr. Lu Jing. He is Vice Chairman of the China Atomic Energy Authority. His remarks will be delivered in Chinese. Let's make use of the devices that are on our table, the translation devices. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 更好的农业带来更好的生活主题科学论坛，同各国同行和专家学者共同探讨如何发挥和技术优势，更好地促进农业发展和粮食安全，实现联合国2030年可持续发展目标这一重要议题。长达五天到六天的第六十八届联合国呃 IEA 大会理事大会呢，我们先有了核能用于应对气候变化。我们也有了 COP 二十八的核能核电倍增计划，再有了应用应对于疾病，我们有了希望之光，就像格罗西上长机机构倡导的，我们还有了应对污染，有了核能和技术应用于海洋塑料的处理。今天我们来到了最重要的一个题目，关系到人类生存权的发展。刚才格罗西先生也提到了，世界上还有很多人在忍受饥饿。就我们今天讨论原子用于食物这一个重要的啊课题和题目，我觉得这也是符合人类发展的客观规律，也是应该赋予全球每位每个公民都有享有同样的生存权和享受美好生活的权利。粮食和农业是人类生存之本，和技术在植物育种与遗传学、能作物病虫害防治。
土壤和水资源管理、动物卫生、检疫检验、食品安全与控制等领域有着广泛应用，对保障粮食和食品安全、增强农业、适应气候变化能力、助力各国实现减贫兴农和农业现代化都具有重要作用。多年来，国际原能机构与联合国粮农组织密切协作，大力推广核技术在粮食和农业领域的应用，帮助成员国提升核农学能力建设，取得了丰硕成果。2023年10月，机构与粮农组织联合发起“原子用于粮食”倡议，为全球南方广大发展中国家利用核技术改善粮食安全。解决贫穷和饥饿问题带来了新的希望，中国对此高度赞赏，并愿意切实行动给予大力支持。作为全球最大的发展中国家，中国始终坚持以人民为中心的发展思想，高度重视农业、农村、农民“三农”问题，在核技术农业应用领域。中国已逐步建立了完备的科研教育体系，并积累了丰富的应用实践。中国利用辐射诱变技术育育成改良的农作物品种超过一千余个，约占全球总量的三分之一。农产品、食品年辐照加工量达到一百七十多万吨，约占全球总量的三分之二。同位素适中、稳定同位素溯源、昆虫辐射不育等技术，在粮食和农业领域的应用正不断取得新的进展成效。核技术为中国打赢脱贫攻坚战、全面推进乡村振兴发挥了重要作用。作为中国政府核工业主管部门，中国国家原能机构会同有关部门，统筹协调，有为政府和有效市场同向发力。推动核技术产业高质量发展。我们正在研究制定核技术产业高质量发展“三零”行动计划和中长期发展规划，将进一步加强政策引领和资源统筹，支持关键技术攻关、创新成果转化、应用场景拓展和产业规模发展。在核农学领域，我们将继续培育更多高产、优质。绿色的农作物品种，进一步提高农业、农业面源污染防治与治理水平，着力提升农产品产地溯源与鉴别技术的成熟度，继续推动核技术在食品及农产品辐照灭菌、病虫害防治、诱变育种等方面的应用拓展和效能提升，为农业高质量发展培育新质生产力。在大力推动核技术造福民生的同时，中国也高度关注国际交流合作，致力于帮助其他发展中国家提升核科技水平，实现共同繁荣发展。在机构技术合作框架下，中国积极接受其他发展中国家、专家学者来华，科学进修、科访进修、交流培训，并为其能力建设。人才培养等提供技术支持和专家服务。核技术在粮食和农业领域的应用就是其中的重点方向之一。在亚太地区核科学技术合作协定的框架下，中国充分发挥核农学牵头国的作用，引领推进本地区诱变育种、食品辐照等项目合作，为地区各国减贫兴农做出积极贡献。中国还与机构合作设立了辐射诱变育种、食品质量安全、昆虫不育等协作中心，向全球南方国家分享知识经验，培育专业人才。各位同事，消除饥饿、实现粮食安全、促进可农业、促进农业可持续发展，是联合国2030年可持续发展议程中的重中之重。中方愿与机构和世界各国一道，采取切实行动，支持原子用于粮食倡议，携手促进核农业、核农学技术创新和应用推广
，持续深化粮食和农业领域的南南合作，为加快落实联合国二零三零可持续发展议程，建设没有贫困和饥饿的世界。构建人类命运共同体，做出更大贡献。谢谢。Thank you very much, Mr. Liu Jing. Our next remarks will be delivered by His Excellency Sidi Temoko Traore, Minister of Animal and Fisheries Resources in Cote d'Ivoire. As he is making his way up. I'll give you an important piece of information, and that is our hashtag for the forum is hashtag scientific forum to get the message out there on our various social media platforms. Mesdames et Messieurs les ministres, Monsieur le Directeur Général de l'AEA, avant tout propos, permettez-moi de vous adresser, Monsieur le Directeur Général. Une mention spéciale au nom du président de la République de Côte d'Ivoire, Son Excellence M. Alassane Ouattara, pour l'opportunité que vous donnez à la Côte d'Ivoire de participer à ce panel de haut niveau sur le thème Atomes pour l'alimentation, une meilleure agriculture pour une meilleure vie. Mesdames et Messieurs, l'agriculture africaine, conciliant pratiques traditionnelles et approches nouvelles face aux enjeux de sécurité, et de souveraineté alimentaire, couplée aux impératifs environnementaux, doit se transformer pour s'inscrire dans une logique de durabilité. En 2021, environ 278 millions de personnes ont été touchées par la faim en Afrique. En Afrique subsaharienne, 63% de la population a été touchée par l'insécurité alimentaire en 2021. Pour y faire face, les États africains se sont engagés à transformer le secteur agricole afin de parvenir à une souveraineté alimentaire durable. En effet, l'agriculture occupe une place centrale et stratégique en Afrique. Elle représente 23% du PIB du continent et emploie 55% de la population active. Ainsi, l'initiative « L'atome pour l'alimentation » qui s'inscrit dans le cadre de cette lutte contre l'insécurité alimentaire n'est point une approche de trop et elle se présente comme une approche innovante et suscite beaucoup d'espoir pour l'Afrique. Mesdames et Messieurs, dans son ambition de transformation de son agriculture en général et du secteur des ressources animales et halieutiques en particulier, la Côte d'Ivoire a adopté des politiques de développement pour atteindre la souveraineté alimentaire et nutritionnelle. Au regard des enjeux du secteur des ressources animales et halieutiques, la politique nationale de développement de l'élevage, de la pêche et de l'aquaculture, la PONADEPA pour les périodes 2022-2026, se donne pour objectif général de garantir la sécurité et la sûreté alimentaire, la production durable des protéines animales de qualité et la création d'emplois pour les jeunes et les femmes s'inscrivant ainsi dans l'ambition du président de la République, son Excellence Alassane Ouattara, de faire de la Côte d'Ivoire un pays solidaire sur la base d'une croissance vigoureuse, soutenue et inclusive. Pour opérationnaliser cette nouvelle politique et la pérennisation des acquis, le ministère des Ressources animales et halieutiques a mis en place des centres d'application et de spécialisation. Il constitue une nouvelle approche de mise en œuvre des projets et viennent répondre aux contraintes majeures des filières animales et halieutiques par l'adressage des problématiques de l'ensemble des chaînes de valeur. Ces centres sont dédiés à la recherche et au développement des filières concernées, à la formation des bénéficiaires et à l'encadrement des acteurs de la chaîne de valeur et des filières concernées, et enfin à l'employabilité des jeunes et des femmes par leur installation dans les métiers de l'élevage. Mesdames et Messieurs, pour l'atteinte de ses objectifs ambitieux, la Côte d'Ivoire veut continuer à compter sur sa coopération avec l'AUA. En effet, le pays membre de l'Agence depuis le 19 novembre 1963 bénéficie d'une coopération technique dans divers secteurs économiques et technologiques nucléaires. Dans le domaine de la production et de la santé animale, plusieurs projets ont été financés par l'Agence en Côte d'Ivoire durant une décennie 
L'AUE a apporté un appui au laboratoire national d'appui au développement agricole de Benjerville en termes de formation et d'équipement de laboratoire. Cette collaboration a porté sur la santé, la nutrition, la production et la reproduction des animaux d'élevage et a abouti à une amélioration considérable de la productivité animale en Côte d'Ivoire. L'un des résultats majeurs a été le diagnostic et la lutte contre certaines pathologies infectieuses telles que la peste porcine africaine, la peste des petits ruminants et d'autres grandes maladies animales transfrontalières, notamment la trypanosome africaine, euh, animale africaine. En outre, sur la période 2016 et 2025, trois projets nationaux sont mis en œuvre par le ministère des Ressources animales et halieutiques avec l'appui de l'AUA pour un montant de 1 400 000 euros. Et ces différents projets sont essentiellement portés sur l'étude des maladies respiratoires des petits ruminants et l'application des techniques nucléaires basées sur l'ADN pour améliorer la productivité du bétail local. Ces projets ont obtenu des résultats considérables pour notre élevage. Ainsi, un accroissement très significatif de 22,58% du cheptel national du petit ruminant a été observé sur la période 2016-2023. La productivité du cheptel bovin national s'améliore du fait de la vulgarisation des pratiques d'amélioration génétique et de nutrition animale sur nos élevages bovins ainsi que le contrôle de certains épisodies dans les élevages. Mesdames et Messieurs, le, la Côte d'Ivoire reste convaincue du rôle essentiel que joue l'AEA dans la production nationale, la production durable des ressources d'élevage et pour la sécurité alimentaire de notre pays. Avant de clore mon propos, permettez-moi de formuler quelques perspectives de projet suivant. L'installation de plusieurs services d'insémination artificielle et de santé animale pour le bon maillage du territoire et ces services euh, seront logés, bien sûr, dans les différents centres d'application. L'installation des unités de production d'azote liquide afin de rendre autonome les services d'insémination artificielle et ainsi la construction d'un laboratoire de dernière génération afin d'aider à détecter plus facilement les agents pathogènes à la base de la propagation de maladies émergentes. Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais saisir donc cette tribune pour réaffirmer l'engagement du gouvernement ivoirien à renforcer sa coopération technique avec l'AEA. Et c'est sur ces mots que je voudrais clore mon propos en nous souhaitant d'excellents et fructueux échanges. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much, Minister. For the benefit of those who were not able to access Minister's remarks, we will make sure that there will be a translated version uh, on the page uh, of the IAEA website that will be at the, towards the end of the conference. So those remarks will be available translated in English for those who were not able to hear in the French. Our next speaker is Her Excellency uh, Ms. Leila Benali. She is Minister of Energy, Transition and Sustainable Development in the Kingdom of Morocco. Thank you. Um, Director General Rafael Grossi and dear friend, uh, Mr. Abdelhamid Khalifa, another big friend of uh, Morocco and uh, uh, the middle income countries in general, President of OPEC Fund for International Development, uh, His Excellency uh, Mudavadi, Prime Cabinet Secretary of uh, Kenya, Vice Chairman, Ministers, Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, it's really a great pleasure to join you today in this prestigious scientific forum. Whatever you say, Rafael, it's a prestigious scientific forum. And you chose a very important theme, and we would really like to congratulate you for that and congratulate uh, the IAEA staff for organizing this session around Atoms for Food, Better Agriculture for a Better Life. It's a very crucial uh, subject of importance as we seek to address global challenges related to food security and sustainable development, especially if we are supposed to be 10 billion of us by 2050, as it was highlighted by um, uh, President Al-Khalifa. 
This is a really an ideal opportunity to explore how nuclear science and technology, but by bringing also development finance and environment diplomacy. Morocco has been president of United Nations Assembly for the Environment in Kenya actually for a couple of years. So we definitely see the importance of bringing science, business, development finance, and environmental diplomacy together to transform agriculture, to transform food security, and to create more productive and sustainable farming practices contributing, of course, to a better life for everyone. Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, the government of the Kingdom of Morocco attaches strategic importance to the integration of agriculture, water, and energy. These are recognized as fundamental pillars for supporting sustainable economic development and fostering social progress. Uh, the Kingdom of Morocco faces and has been facing major challenges exacerbated by climate change, persistent drought, and the continuous growth on demand. As I used to say, as, as Minister of Energy Transition and Sustainable Development, Morocco did not need to wait 2050 to uh, experience climate change. For us, we have to reach net zero or even real zero before 2020 because we experienced very, very severe drought, droughts over the last few years. And to address these critical issues, His Majesty King Mohammed VI, during his speech on his throne day on July 2024, called for the urgent and innovative implementation of drinking water supply and irrigation. He also called for the completion of all dam and water transfer projects as fast as possible, the acceleration of desalination projects, and the production of water using clean energy sources exclusively. And as you know, over the past 15 years, Morocco has implemented a low carbon energy strategy to enhance energy security, improve energy availability, and make it accessible at very competitive and affordable costs. And I can tell you that this energy strategy is very much based on a very simple triangle, renewable energy, energy efficiency, and regional integration, not only between Africa and Europe, but Africa, Europe, and the Atlantic Basin. And this energy strategy, this very simple triangle that we have in our energy st strategy, actually transpires into our agriculture strategy as well. So our new development model emphasized the modernization and enhancement of the agriculture se sector and the need to strengthen food, not only security, but sovereignty. So we are developing modern and environmentally responsible agriculture by integrating innovative technologies, ensuring sustainable water management, and supporting, whatever we can, research and innovation to improve resilience and productivity. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, Morocco, including through our fertilizers champion, OCP, and in the partnerships that we have with WFP, uh, the UN and WFO and the private sector is really committed to improving food security in the wider African continent and beyond. So we provide green fertilizers to increase crop yields. We provide techniques to promote sustainable farming practices in the wider African continent and to strengthen food supply cha chains, particularly uh, to uh, have drought, drought resistant crops. And since joining the IAEA back in 1957, Morocco has embraced the use of nuclear science and technology for peaceful purposes across sectors, but including also in agriculture and water. And by recognizing very early on and leveraging the significant benefits of these technologies, Morocco has committed to advancing their application for the betterment of the society. This commitment has been reinforced by Morocco's adherence to nearly all conventions and treaties under the IAEA's auspices covering nuclear and radiological safety and security, civil liability in the event of nuclear damage and safeguards. And through an open approach, 
we have been strengthening our nuclear legislative and institutional frameworks on nuclear and radiological safety and security while ensuring that that framework is aligned with international standards. So after the successful implementation of our previous country program framework uh, with the IAEA, our new uh, country program framework targets six priority areas, including food and agriculture. Atom for Foods, At Atoms for Food Initiative, harnesses nuclear techniques. But as Mr. DG said, it's a set of services to really develop more resilient crops, optimize resource management, enhance food security, and more sustainable and efficient agriculture practices. And this advancements, I don't need to tell you about them because you're all here uh, with us, they do not only boost food production, but they also minimize, and I'm putting my environment minister hat, they also minimize environmental impacts of our agriculture sectors and improve the sustainability of agriculture practices. And I'm pleased here to present very briefly some very important projects undertaken by Morocco, in Morocco or in Africa, in collaboration with the IAEA to advance food sovereignty through modern, high value, inclusive, but also responsible agricultural practices. So we have a local production unit for sterile males for Mediterranean fruit fly in the Sousmassa region. An ir irradiator has been installed in July of this year, 2024. The project with it, which employs the sterile insect technique aims to improve, imp improve food quality, reduce costs, but also limit pesticide use. This unit will supply sterile pupae no, no, nationwide and in the continent and serves as a regional center to provide expertise and support to other countries. We're also working on assessing soil erosion and conservation practices across several basins and regions. And we are contributing to the efficient use of nitro nitrogen fertilizers and water in agriculture for various crops and irrigation systems. We, are, we, also, we have also established uh, stable isotope databases for traceability of food products. We started with milk, of course, argan oil, olive oil, and uh, honey and saffron, but we are extending that to other food products. And of course, we are developing improved crop varieties resistant to dry, to drought, to climate change, through mutation breeding, nuclear irradiation, and other uh, uh, associated biotechnologies. We have focused first on, on citrus varieties through mutation induction also for strawberries and peanuts. But of course, we are extending that to other products as well. And when it comes to animals, uh, we are enhancing livestock and crop productivity by strengthening technical expertise, and particularly for better diagnosis and monitoring of animal diseases. Again, if we are expected to be 10 million people by 2050, we need to reach to bring in those technologies to the next level. So the full potential of all these technologies and, and beyond uh, can only be, re be re realized with a pool of highly qualified professionals. It's very urgent to invest in education, in training, and research to prepare future generations to lead this transformation. We cannot continue hesitating to, un to, to, to see whether we accept or don't accept nuclear or radiological technologies. So I'm pleased to announce that Morocco, through CNESTEN, our Center uh, for uh, Nuclear Technologies, has received on the, sideline of, on the sidelines of this general conference a new recognition from the IAEA as a collaborative center for three areas, isotopic techniques for water resource management, environmental protection, and industrial applications. So these, these and other agreements further strengthen our, the role of our institutions in future contributions to the African continent regarding radiological and nuclear safety. We are still dedicated and we continue to be dedicated to nuclear excellence and we want to really set the stage for a new generation of collaborations focused on enhancing human and technological capacities across our continent. The, our national infrastructure is open 
to benefiting, as you know, the entire African continent capacity building. And we are committed to supporting the IAA in advancing in its in initiatives for the safe and secure deployment for nuclear science te and technologies in the African continent with our Atlantic partners, particularly in South America and also in Southeast Asia. So excellencies, to conclude, Nuclear innovation really proves to be a crucial element in enhancing agriculture, particularly with this initiative uh, of the Atoms for Food uh, initiatives. And I'm really glad to see in this gathering that we are bringing together development finance, governments, scientists, and I see at times businesses and startups as well so that we can nurture partnerships that will further strengthen our commitment to sustainable solutions for optimized food resource management that really transcends borders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Her Excellency Minister Ben Ali. Our next speaker this morning is His Excellency, Mr. Fernando Matos. He is Minister of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries in Uruguay. Good morning, Mr. Director General, my friend and neighbor, Rafael Mariano Grossi. Thank you very much for your invitation in this um, scientific forum. We have the pleasure to participate. I received early in the morning the surprise that we now have the possibility to, to address you in, in Spanish, so I intend to, to speak my best English. Um, 1970, Norman Borlaug was a colleague that received the Peace Nobel Prize. He was a responsible from the Green Revolution before the genetic engineer technique was available. Strengthening the selection of seeds the resistance, mainly in wheat, resistant of diseases. He developed um, and avoid starvation over the world. He said at this time, there will be no peace in the world with hunger. Now we are facing that we have already this time 800 million people with hunger and a third of the world population with undernutrition. We have a big challenge facing the climate change. It's more difficult to increase the yields. We will have an increase in population in the next 25 years among 25% of our, our nowadays population, but almost 50% more needs of food production because of the increasing of, of an income from people and needs for better nutrition also. And we cannot do with the nowadays techniques of production without having more pressure on the natural resources. So to achieve a sustainable system of production, we need more research, more cooperation, more new techniques of production. In this way, we celebrate the agreement of atoms for food between the uh, nuclear the, the agency and FIO, because we need to advance in other and new techniques to increase the yields to face the challenges of more diseases, more problems from climate change. We have a, a variability, increasing variability, that makes a very difficult for us as Minister of Agriculture of a, a, a food producer, a fiber producer. We have a, from, from one year from the other, severe droughts with, uh, with severe also floods, just 
just close time later. So it's very difficult for us to face this. In this case, we are talking about the cooperation. We are talking one, from one case from uh, our continent, the case of screw worm. The screw worm is a plague. The screw worm is a fly uh, that contaminates all animals of warm blood that have very strong losses from production and also affects a human being as a disease. We have a, now uh, the program of a sterile insect technique applied in North America and Central America. We have now in this moment the reintroduction of the plague. But Uruguay is the first country that's beginning a program, a program of eradication with the IEIE cooperation also. We have the possibility to, from the eradicate, we have losses, um, number of losses, very, very big one in production, $40 million in our country, but maybe three, $3,000 million all on the continent. So we are the first country in the continent to begin a program of eradication. The reintroduction in Central and North America has a, a forecast of losses, increases of $3 billion per year. And there is a big challenge this moment with the reintroduction. Now we have the problem reintroduced in, pa in Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua and Honduras also. So we celebrate this forum. We, we were very thankful because of the cooperation of the agency. And we are looking for work, for work together with more cooperation and more research among us in order to face the challenges to achieve the SDG number one, to eliminate the hunger in the world. And to do this, we need more cooperation of this kind of agency. Thank you very much. Thank you, His Excellency. And I now want to invite Mr. Giorgio Silly onto the stage. He is Under Secretary of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in Italy. Grazie. So thank you very much. It's a true pleasure to be here with you today alongside Director General Grossi to discuss uh, such an important initiative. As the host country of uh, the United Nations Food Hub, uh, Italy places great importance on food safety and security, key pillars of our international cooperation efforts. It's no coincidence that uh, the Atoms for Food initiative was launched in Rome during the World Food Forum 2023 reflecting our deep commitment to advancing global food security. Together with the Director Grossi, we had the privilege of attending this morning the event co-organized by the Italian Permanent Mission in Vienna and the Women in Nuclear Association, which focused on atom for food and gender mainstreaming. This collaboration highlights the intersection of food security and gender equality, both of which are critical for sustainable development. Italy is eager to deepen its collaboration with the, with the agency in exploring further synergies with the Atoms for Food initiative. We see great poten uh, potential in combining our strength to address some of the most pressing global challenges related to food security sustainability and technological innovation. We can work together in the framework of the Mattei Plan for Africa and our current G7 presidency that identify global food security and agri-food sector as key priorities. The Mattei Plan is the flagship initiative of the Italian government for the African continent. It is named after Enrico Mattei, the charismatic leader of Italy's national oil company, Eni, which in the 1950s sought to support African countries, uh, African countries' development of their natural resources. We're talking about the 50s. 
With the same spirit, we aim to increase the African economy's participation in global value chains with a view to fostering development and the distribution of wealth. Agriculture is one of the main pillars of the Matei Plan. There are over 1 billion hectares of uh, arable land worldwide, of which 350 million are on the African continent, twice as many as in the European Union. Africa has the potential to produce enough food to meet the food needs of its population, contributing to global food security. More than 60% of the world's arable land is still uncultivated in Africa. We are working closely with African countries in order to enhance food security, promote the sustainable agriculture, and foster the inclusion of women and young people in the agricultural sector. We are committed to advancing the agri-food chains of African countries, reducing malnutrition and mitigating the impacts of climate change through the promotion of sustainable food system transformation. To this end, we are developing a high-impact regional project, particularly in strategic sectors such as coffees and cocoa. Food security was also a central theme at the recent G7 summit in Borgo Ignazia, where we launched the Apulia Food System Initiative, the aim of which is to boost agricultural production in Africa and make food system in those nations more sustainable and more resilient. The upcoming 2024 G7 Apulia Progress Report on advancing sustainable development in Africa follows the same path. Italy invests and counts on the support of the agency and the United Nations family in Vienna for strengthening this initiative. I'm pleased to announce that Italy will be one of the first co-chairs of the Group of Friends of Food Security, an initiative that the African group will soon launch here in Vienna. This initiative parallels the successful group of friends in New York, which Italy has co-chaired for several years. I invite all of you to join us at the dedicated side event on Thursday morning. Vienna also represents the natural setting for promoting together the first pillar of the Mattei Plan, which is dedicated to education and training. I would like to acknowledge the significant impact of uh, a year's Marie Curie Fellowship Program. One in four Marie Curie scholarships go to students for, from Africa. Expanding the number of scholarships will allow more talented younger scientists from African countries to access high quality education. Italy is proud to support the program and I'm pleased to announce that the Polytechnic University of Milan has recently signed an agreement with the AIEA to found additional scholarship under the Marie Curie Fellowship. The International Center of Theoretical Physics in Trieste, in Italy, has also expressed interest in hosting a growing number of Marie Curie Fellows focusing on food-related issues. In conclusion, I would like to confirm Italy's commitment in favor of the agency and in uh, identifying shared solutions to complex global challenges. I would like to extend my best wishes to the Scientific Forum and to the Atoms for Food Initiative for your continued success. Thank you very much. Grazie. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Seeley. And that does it for our opening session this morning. Thank you, DG Rossi, and thank you to your excellencies for your remarks this morning.